Where do we come from? Are we alone? These are fundamental questions. Uh, if we answer those, we can map our future. We can have a good strategy. We can protect ourselves. We can understand our place in the universe. These are fundamental questions. And we will start to answer those when we go to the moon and Mars. But first we have to test the technologies. This lab that you're looking at now is called the Swamp Works. It's an innovation environment. If you want to go into space, you have to be innovative. You, you can't use the same methods as you've used it before. And the technology is constantly evolving. It's constantly getting better. Dust has been identified as one of the top two impediments to long duration human space exploration for the moon. The other one is obviously radiation effects. The surface appears to be very fine grained as you get close to it. It's almost like a powder. It is a significant problem. The dust is very small, very fine particles. It's toxic. It gets into the joints and moving parts of all the mechanisms. For the Apollo mission, many of the mechanisms were rendered unusable after three days of exposure. So we've been developing our electrodynamic dust shield technology for 20 years or so. It's a technology demonstration of active dust removal. You push a button and the dust removes from a surface. And what I'm going to do is, if I have a glass surface that's coated with dust, I'm going to turn on my EDS and I'm going to watch the dust remove from the surface. So they can be made quite large. Roughly the same amount of power as what you just saw there, we can actually remove dust from a floor mat essentially. And that's our goal, is to try to get as many EDSs on the surface of the moon as possible so that humans don't have to spend time clearing surfaces, they don't have to time brushing off their suits or kicking off their boots or spending a lot of time trying to wipe their visors. When Buzz Aldrin landed on the moon, he said, magnificent desolation. It looks like that, but if you go into the dirt, into the lunar soil, which we call regolith, it's crushed rock. And in the crushed rock, we have minerals. And in the minerals, we have elements. And we have a lot of resources there. If you pick up a bucket of dirt on the moon, 42% of that bucket is oxygen. We are developing excavation technologies to be able to excavate the regolith, which has the resources in it, so then we can send it to processing plants to extract all those resources. Currently, we have a mission that's right now scheduled for FY26. We're actually going up there to collect 10 metric tons of regolith and deliver it to just a simple area that we're gonna pile it up at, just to prove that we are able to actually excavate on the moon. The one behind me is Razor 2, it's the second generation of this concept. This robot here doesn't look like any other type of excavation system that you've probably ever seen. Excavators here on Earth use the weight of their vehicle to react their excavation forces. When you go on the moon, now you're one-sixth the weight that you are here on Earth, so you don't have the reaction force anymore. So we came up with an idea utilizing these bucket drum technologies and the excavation forces from one counteracts the excavation forces from the other side so now we're not reliant on the weight of the vehicle to provide that reaction force like you would here on earth some of the other areas that we're working on beyond just excavation is construction we have current projects right now utilizing 3d printing technology we can actually print full roads if we wanted to if we could print repair parts for our robots what we're trying to do is prove out technologies that we can use to build large-scale structures on the lunar surface using local resources as much as possible. A lot of work is being done to center regolith, which is essentially melting the regolith so that it forms a solid structure. This is basalt fiber. It's like basically fiberglass or carbon fiber, but it's made out of rock. We're learning to 3D print large-scale infrastructure. One of the hazards that we have to face on the lunar surface is radiation. So one of the ideas is that we can create this protective structure by 3D printing a large arch and then covering that with regolith so that all of the radiation exposure would be basically mitigated. In my mind, the very first sustainable presence on the moon is gonna be more like an outpost or a camp. And so you'll probably use bulk regolith infrastructure to build things like burn. 
berms and compacted roads and level surfaces. But then as time goes on, NASA and commercial and industry will start building up their technologies, will start to build up markets there, and it will start to look a little bit closer like a city or a, a larger scale uh, community like we have on Earth. We'd love to run space station as long as we can, and, and we've got support to, to continue to operate space station until the 2030s. But however, it's an aging system, and, and we're starting to see the commercial evolution in low Earth orbit. Gateway takes advantage of what we've learned in space station. We're going to have what we call a gateway, which is, think of that as a small space station in lunar orbit. With a gateway, it's going to be quite a bit further away. It's about 240,000 miles away as opposed to, you know, 200 or so. Gateway represents an orbiting platform that goes around the moon. We can now learn to live longer in a different environment, a different radiation environment, a longer trip from home. The emergency situation changes. If we can expand that and bring that out to the moon, now we have the opportunity to access all the different locations of the moon and really start to set the stage for a deep space transportation that'll bring us to Mars. We have a science region of interest and a resource region of interest. And for the resources, we're trying to extract resources to survive and, and build a, a local economy. And for science, we're trying to expand the state of knowledge so we can understand our whole solar system and how it relates back to Earth. What is our place in the solar system? How does our planet evolve? And, and how can we keep our planet healthy and safe? We're the research and development leg for the American public. So we are always stretching the boundaries of what is possible. That's the point. Because our investment in what NASA does has tremendous returns back to expanding the minds of our children to understand what's possible, you know, pushing the technology here on Earth to make our lives easier and finding ways to take care of what we have. That's the whole point. But at its heart, I really think it's about the, the nature of people to, to want to explore, want to find out what's out there. And, you know, I think there'll be huge benefits to, to all of humanity for doing that. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.